Okay, so let's start. I'm going to go back here. So this is what I actually did before the lesson. I and new imperial. I'm going to start with an architectural template because it's easy. Uh, we will start with the new session. Uh, so on the east side, I'm again going to draw different levels. Offset 10 feet, thick lines. So nine floors, we did nine levels, we did draw. We're going to go back to architecture floor, uh, architecture uh, tab. On level one, I'm drawing a floor. We start with the staircase. And let's go to stair. Uh, let's go three feet width instead of three feet out, four feet width. By default, my risers are 18 inches. Um, my, my risers are um, seven inches approximately. Uh, let's decrease the number of steps to 16. Okay. So my tread, tread width, uh, depth is 11 inches, seven and a half is my riser. Actual number of risers, right now it says one, but when we start drawing it, it would be more than that. So let's start again. So we have eight risers here and here. Now it says it, it Okay, so what it did was it did not generate an automatic layout for the landing because these kind of overlap. So what we'll do is I'll go back, I'll go run eight. And I have this. I will go back. Let me unpin them. And I will align them. This level. Okay, let me move this two feet this direction, two feet. This direction. And so I'll go to architecture tab. I will select the floor. Okay, before I do that, I want to copy this floor to level two. So I will go here, copy, paste to assigned levels. I will just go to level two for now. Press OK. I will go to level two. I will move to wireframe because I want to see my staircase. I will go on my floor, select the floor, edit boundary. I will select the outside of the staircase. And yes, now let's go to the 3D view. And we have the cutout. Now we would also eventually want to have um, mm, a, a, a railing in here. We will go through that too. Uh, you can always edit 
your um, uh, your boundary. You can give it any shape because it's a sketched. So last time when we discussed that we can have a, um, a, all the floors and uh, ceilings and roofs, all these are all these are part of our sketch space modeling. So we can actually edit them and make any shape out of them. Now I will go back to my level one. Actually, I will go back to level two. I will select my floor. I will also select my staircase. Then I will copy, paste. Oh, it will not, okay, it will not select. So now because I was selecting two elements, it is not uh, assigning it to the levels. It is not assigning it, itself to the level. So we will do it one by one. So I will select the, the floor, copy, paste, align to selected levels. So because I'm on level two, I will start from level three, shift, press all the way to level nine, press OK. Now I will go to staircase, copy, paste, align, and all the way from level two to level eight, and press OK. So this is giving me a warning. The actual riser height of staircase is greater than the maximum riser height. So it's giving me a little bit of error, but let's see how does that go. We will go to the 3D view. So we have a staircase. We have a staircase still here. I can again copy and paste, select to align levels. So yeah, there's, because, uh, okay, yeah, we need one more staircase. So let's go and copy and then paste selected levels level eight okay yeah so it says the top of the stair exceeds or cannot reach this is because there is we did not uh, pay attention to the to the calculation what we'll do is we will uh, we'll we'll do the calculation again. But anyway, so this is how we will do it. Uh, we will copy the staircase all the way. Now, what I want also to show you guys is that let's say this was one staircase inside the building. Another staircase that I would want to draw is um, let's say an exit staircase on the outside. And it will be, uh, let's say, a spiral staircase. Now here, because it's a circular staircase, it's asking me for the radius, right? And because I have not, if you go towards here, I, did, I just by default selected the riser depth. It gave me the riser height. I can go and select, let's say my number of staircase, my number of steps to be 16. And I'm okay. And let's see now, it's giving me 16 risers. Even after I have drawn this, I can change the radius. Let's say I want my radius to be 15 feet. I can do that. And then again, just move my arrow from here to here. Uh, 
I can always shift if I want to move it a little here. I can, if I want to align my staircase, my this to this, I can do this. So we can do a lot of things in here. So again, I can copy this all the way from one level to the other. Uh, why is this not? Oh, it's on the opposite side. It did not complete its its turn. Let's go to level two. Yeah, we need, it, it needs to complete its turn. Okay, now when we do this, we can also switch the up and down from here. Let's do this. Let's do one more thing in here. Let's go to staircase. Now what I want is I want to decrease my width to um, two feet, six inches. I want my base level to be level one. My top level to be level two. And I want my risers to be Let's do 20 risers and six inches. And depth, I want to do it 10 inches. Now, now I should be, it says the actual depth of stair is less than the minimum tread depth specified in the staircase. We will look at the calculation, but let's align it right now. I want to align this to here. And I can, as I, as you can see that, you know, it's not really, like we need, we need this to touch. Ah, uh, okay, let's see. Let's move it somewhere where it can actually touch. And, Align. Let's rotate this. Align. So now if I think I would want like I, I just want it like this, I can um, um, I can also increase or decrease the, the radius of it. If I decrease the radius further, more, uh, more round it will become. It can have like a really spiral uh, end to it. Um, if I do the radius three feet, so it, it will become more and more round as we, uh, as we decrease the radius. So, Let's go to 3D view and we can see that how now this is like, it's making a proper staircase. And if I copy this all the way, it will, um, it will copy itself. Uh, next thing that we would want to do is if I go on my level one, I want to draw um, a railing on the, um, on my cut on the slab cut. So let's go to the 3D view. I will, what I will do is I will select this floor and I will just right click and okay, I will isolate this actually. So I will isolate element so that I can just work on this element. Now I will start drawing railing from here. 
architecture tab, railing, sketch path. I will start picking up the edges. Okay, it's picking up the edge below. So doing on 3D is not a good idea. Let's do it in the floor plan so that I can pick up the exact edge. I will hide the staircase right now. Okay, so, so that I can have a clear view of where I want to draw my, um, my railing. So let's go to architecture tab, railing. I will select the railing on all four sides. Actually, I will not select the railing here. And I will go back to this reveal hidden elements, unhide in view by category. And let's go to 3D view. We did draw this. If I would go and reset, so I have the railing right here. If you guys do not like this railing, there are some preloaded railings in there. There is a, a glass panel one. There is a, a guard rail. There, there are a few types in there, but what we can do is um, eventually you can start creating your own kind of railings. Uh, if you have uh, any content creation, you can do, uh, if you, if you, you know, if go through you go through a content creation course, you can you can actually do your own uh, railing family, uh, and uh, you can then preload it in here. So this is one kind. Then let's go back to my level one, and now what I want to do is I want to draw a stair. But now I want to do an L-shaped winder. So again, an L-shaped winder, it already gives me, based on the calculation, it gives me 18 steps. It gives me like an 11 inches tread width and all of that. I can, I can again increase or decrease the number of steps. The good thing is that Revit will do your calculation. And it will give you the exact height or exact uh, number of steps. If you, like one or other thing you will have to finalize and rest of the calculations it will do for you. Uh, you can always flip the, the side of, uh, of your um, uh, run. So if I go here and I say, uh, Flip. So now it's it started from here to here. Now it started from here to here. So similarly, if I select this staircase and I want to just flip from where it starts, you just go select the staircase, edit stair, flip and it will just flip the side. Now, one more thing I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this staircase and I'm going to copy it copy it from here It says the actual riser of the stair is greater than the maximum riser height specified in the stair type. So because we have not, you know, fixed the calculations in the edit type, it's giving me this. Anyways, uh, rotate. Uh, why are you doing that?
because now I really want this hidden line and this is fine. Let's go to 3D view, one of the staircase. Actually, this staircase, I will just copy it outside. Let's go to floor plan. I'm going to rotate this. Move and align. Okay. Now let's say if I want to change the uh, the shape of the landing. So let's say if this was a, a landing which needs some kind of curve from here. So what I can do is right now it's a cast in like an assembled staircase. Now I want to make it a sketch-based staircase. So I will go to edit stair. I will select the landing and I would convert this into a sketch-based landing. Instead of an assembled staircase, it's now a sketch-based staircase. Now it gives me an option, um, a, a warning. It says converting an automatic landing or a run component to custom sketch based component is irreversible. You can edit the sketch of custom component. So it's saying basically that this is an irreversible change and you cannot redo it. So I said, okay, I'm fine. Now I will select my landing and I will go edit sketch. Now let's put, let's give it a, a curve. So I select two ends and let's say this is the curve I want to give it and I'll, I'll just delete the, this, I'll delete this, I'll delete this, I'll delete this and just press yes. So now I have a staircase with, where I can change the, uh, the, the, I've changed the landing shape. So this is all the customization that we can do uh, with the staircase. And then you can copy and, and move it all the way to uh, any other floor. Any questions? Because after this, we are going to move to curtain walls. Let's see if somebody has a question. Any questions? Next week, test eh? Okay. Uh, irregular cutouts, how we can manage them? Uh, we can edit the riser. So, okay, uh, first I'll answer Anmol's question. So Anmol is asking, we can e edit the riser? Yes, we can. Uh, so if I go to a particular staircase, I can go to edit type and I can change the riser height and I can change the tread depth and I can change the width. I can do all of that in here. So let's say um, I wanna fix my riser height to eight inches or I wanna change my tread depth to 10 inches. So a thumb of rule is basically the sum of the tread and the riser should not be more than 18 inches. Uh, so I try to keep it between that. If you make it 10.5, then you make it um, 
make this 7.5, you can do 11 and um, 7. So you have to just play within that. Uh, if there are any other calculation rules, any special kind of staircase you have, sometimes staircase um, uh, has, um, there's like a, a, any other kind of calculation you want to do, you can, you can do it here that, let's say two into riser plus one into depth. This is going to be my, so you have to, you have to, you can do that. It's, it's very, very customizable. Uh, always try to, whenever you make changes to this, always duplicate and then make changes so that you don't change the, change it for the whole project. This is the rule of thumb for the, like even in the first lecture, I told you guys that uh, whenever you have to make any changes in the type properties, duplicate that family and then make the changes. Uh, irregular cutouts. So um, that just like I explained earlier that uh, we can, because if we do uh, uh, um, an edit boundary in here, I can do any shape of cutout. So let's say uh, in this, this is my first floor and this is an L shape, but I wanna you know, make a stylized cut here. I would just go and I will start drawing. And let's do a, a curve in there. And let's say if I wanna do something like this in here. So you can draw your shape and you can make the cutout according to. Now, Anmol Kamboj is asking, uh, how can we make a staircase if the walls are in curved? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so like, you, like we saw here, we have staircases, we have a spiral staircase. We, similarly, we have a spiral end staircase. So what we do here is you can, uh, did I select the wrong one? Let's make um, a curved wall so that we can do. Okay, there are, there's one more option that we did not discuss, which is a sketch based uh, staircase. So in this staircase, we really have to define the boundaries, the risers and the paths. So let's say I have a, a boundary that I create like this. Then let me give this boundary a curve. And then let's do this. Uh, let's do one more curve. Uh, 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 uh. Again, I will draw this. See, I'm just doing it this on the fly. It could totally bomb, but let's see. Uh, and my width offset, let's do three feet. And fill it. And so I drew the boundary. Then I will start drawing the risers. Then I will start offsetting my risers. So let's say 11 inches. And I will pick line. So you see, you see here, it's giving me how many risers have been created and how many are remaining. Uh, okay, wait, this is doing riser. Uh, 
Why is this just drawing one? Okay. Riser. So we have the first riser. Then we have the second riser. What? Let's draw the path. I don't know how this is going to go. I have, <laughs> I'm just drawing it widely, but this is how we will draw the risers. Uh, offset. Eat. Oh, it overlapped. I don't understand why this is just creating one riser. Why is it not creating another more risers? Hmm. I mean, it is done like this. I don't know why, what am I missing in here and why I cannot really custom, custom, uh, staircase with this uh, and can we just array along the path i don't think so i don't think so we will have to actually draw it um let me get get back to you on this but uh, guys i did also find out that we can scale the pdf to exactly the same scale so last time if you guys remember towards the end of the class just remind me I will show you how we can scale the PDF to exact um, scale that we want. So let's move ahead with this. Um, and I will see why we cannot, why, what problem is it giving in here, the customs. But we can, we can draw, we can draw the boundaries, we can draw the rises and we can draw the run and we can make the staircase like that. Let's move ahead with the, the curtain walls. So basically in Revit, Curtain wall is a is a, a reg, is a another version of another uh, of a regular wall. So a generic wall is is converted into curtain wall. In this situation, what we'll do is to create a curtain wall. We go to architecture tab. We select wall. Any generic wall it does not matter. We select the base constraint. And uh, let's say the top constraint is level two and apply. And I'm going to create a wall all the way from here to here and a wall from here to here. So this is the wall that I want to create as a, as a curtain wall. Actually, what I will do is I will do one more wall from here to here. And so if you saw that the wall join, and let's say somewhere here, I want this L to be my curtain wall. So what I will do is I will select the wall. I will split with a gap. So there's a gap in here. I will split with the gap. I can always increase or decrease the size. So let's say it's 12 feet, seven inches. I wanna make it 15 feet. Mm. So this side went out because this is the side that I selected. If I had selected this side, that side would go. So, but we can, we can always, um, let's do this, 15 feet. So now this is good. Uh, now what I will do is I will select these two walls 
I will scroll down from the basic generic wall. I will scroll all the way down and it gives me options for curtain wall, exterior glazing or storefront. So I would go with curtain wall and you will see that it created a curtain, uh, a glass wall in here. Now let's go to 3D view and you guys can see that we have created a curtain wall in here. Now, I mean, a curtain wall means that it needs to have some mullions. It needs to have some grid of some sort. Uh, uh, it needs to have a joint at the end. So what we do is we will go to one of the elevations. So on floor plan level, I will go on this elevation, go to elevation view. Okay, by the way, I can always select any wall and from let's say level two, I can go all the way to level nine and the, the wall gets created similarly here. Uh, for curtain wall, I would want to go from floor to floor because uh, the curtain wall really needs the edges of the floor to, to anchor itself. Uh, now, if you look here, it says configure the curtain wall layout. So I select that. When I select that, it is by default giving me a, a grid. But I can draw my own grid into this. So once I've selected the curtain wall, now I will go to architecture tab and I would go to curtain grid. Now I will start drawing the grid. So if you see this, you can actually start placing your grid. Just place one. Now you can create a grid with Now I can really offset this. Let's say I want to create a three feet by five feet. So let's do a, a three feet. Okay, sorry, copy. And let's do this three feet and then Copy. And okay, why am I doing this multiple? Three feet and three feet. Let's delete this and architecture curtain grid. So five feet. So we got one five feet and we got another five feet. So now the purpose of this grid is that this is where my mullions will be drawn. Now, what happens is for me to draw mullions, I do need a grid before. Uh, uh, if we do not have a grid, then uh, our mullions cannot be created. I will go to mullions. I can select the type of mullion in here. I can, for the corners, I would go with like a corner kind of a mullion. Uh, for the center, I'm right now going for a one inch square. There are, there's a two, in, two and a half inches by five inches. There's a V corner. Uh, right now I would go with like a one inch square. As, as I select, oh, this is not the grid. So I can draw a grid in here and then at the bottom. What I will also do is on my floor plan level, I want a mullion in the corner. So I would select a mullion. Sorry, I will go to one of the and Mullion. I will select a corner mullion 
and I would go to the edge and do a corner mullion in here. Now, what I can do is I can select tab, select the whole curtain wall and copy aligned to select levels, shift all the way to nine. And the curtain wall gets copied all the way to the top. Let's go back to 3D view. So you see that I, I have a curtain wall all the way to the top. Similarly, we can do on the other side. Um, for if we want to uh, do a curved curtain wall, we will have to draw a curved line. Basically, we will first have to draw a wall and then we convert it into a curtain wall. Now, let's say in this curtain wall, I want to, uh, I want a door somewhere here. So doors and curtain walls are also very, very special. Let's go to the West tab. Now, this is a three by five. Now, of course, my doors are not three by five. So uh, let's say my door is three by seven. Now, what I would want to do is, uh, basically, I can now delete any one segment. Like I don't have to delete the whole thing. I have, I can del delete any one section. Also in grid, what I can do is, if I select the grid, I can add and remove the segment. So if I select this, my center segment is gone. Now, what I will do is I will, I will also remove the mullion from below. I didn't understand. And now what I will do is I will select. So what I'm doing is that I am selecting so you see, you, ha you have to just hover over some, um, the area you wanna select, keep on pressing tab till you get to the portion you want. I select this. Now what I want is I want to replace this with the, with the door. Uh, I don't think I have doors in here. Uh, I want a curtain wall door. Right now, we shouldn't, okay, let's see. Let's have a, let's load family from Autodesk. Curtain, wall, panels, doors. So, okay, so that's a single curtain wall door. I'm going to load this in. Now, I loaded that in. Now, this panel, I will replace it with a curtain wall door. So, I will select this. Now, I have this is my door. Now, if I go to my floor plan, you will see that I have a door right in here. Did you guys get how we get we, we went to the door? Or you want me to repeat it? Basically, the concept of curtain walls is that all the components inside the curtain wall, you can treat them separately. So even if you've drawn the mullions, even if you've drawn the, um, the grids, once it's drawn, you can treat each one of them differently. Each one of this mullion, let's say, Instead of 
uh, one inch, these two center, you want to treat them differently. You want to have different mullion in here. Let's say you want to have a, a, a broader mullion in here because it's, it's some kind of um, ornamental uh, thing. Or instead of both these, you want to have a, well, we don't have any more, but, uh, and then each level you would want to make it a little broader. So you can, you can do it at each level. Uh, the door, it kind of adjusted it according to this. What we should actually be doing is we should draw, if I want this door to be smaller, we should go to the architecture tab, go to curtain grid, and just one segment I would want to draw. And let's say, let's see what level this is. So let's say from here to here, it's six feet, eight inches. Let's, let's make it seven feet. Okay, so you see this, as soon as I drew the grid on it, now my door became seven feet. So if I just go here, and I delete the grid, you see how this went back to that. When I, I'm going to undo it, so I drew the grid. Now what I can also do is I can select this and I can remove the individual segments. So let's say I remove this segment, this segment, this segment, and this segment. So now I just have a door in here and this is a separate one. And now I can go into my architecture tab and uh, draw a mullion in here. Mullion, grid line, grid light segment actually. Ah, why? Oh, because, oh, so because it's a, it's a corner one, it's not taking that. So yeah, we were selecting the wrong mullion. So we did select the right mullion, it did take it, and this is the door. So you see, we, because we changed the, the mullion type, this is a different mullion type and this is a different mullion type. Do you guys have questions? Wow, nobody has questions. I have a... I have a batch of really smart people. The door part, could you please explain it again? For sure I can. So let's do it on the other side. Let's say this wall, first of all, what I wanna do is this wall from level one, I want this wall to be all the way to level nine and apply. Now, because this hole is one curtain wall, I will go to, this is, I think this is north side. Yeah, this is north side. Now I will treat this as one canvas. Now I will start drawing my grid. So curtain wall, in my curtain walls, even when I draw the grids, after the grids are drawn, I can treat each segment separately. Let's go to architecture and curtain grid. So right now it says seven feet, six inches. Uh, let's do it. Let's do three five feet ones. So a five feet and a five feet and a five feet. So we have three. And let's do a five feet and 
a five feet. So let's do a five feet by five feet grid. So let's say this is the grid that we have. Now I will go to architecture tab, Mullion. I can select all grid lines and it will make grids on all of this. If I select just the grid line and the grid line I select, it will go over there. If I just select grid line segment, it will select that. So let's go all grid lines. It will select all the grid lines. Ah, millions, all grid lines. Why did this not draw? Anyways, let's do the grid line. What's the problem? Oh, it already drew. I just couldn't see that. Oh, it already drew. Okay, great, awesome. Okay, let's do fine. This is strange, why can I not see this? But I can see it in 3D view. The millions are there. The millions are there. Why can I not see them? I cannot see them. Select select all minions on the grid line and you have to be on the outside, I believe. Yeah, they're on the, the inside. So basically, these mullions have to be outside. Let's delete all of them. Northwest. No, north. Three D view. Select all instances. And delete. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Anyways, let's uh, move to the to the let's do it again. Let's delete the grids, delete the grids, delete the grids, delete the grids, and yeah, delete this. and delete the grids. Curtain grid. And I want to do a word. Five feet. And then I want to do a five feet and a And a five feet in here and a five 
written here. Okay, now I will draw mullions, one in square. Why is this going on the inside? Curtain wall mullions. It's rectangular mullion, but why is it going on the inside? Uh, perpendicular to the face, angle offset. Why is this going on the inside? Level one plan, let's see. Oh, I don't know why is this going on the inside. It should, and it's not even flipping. Let's select another million then. Hmm. Let's go to the West Elevation. Okay, so there, we, don't we have option of changing its, its face? It, we do have it. Uh, I'm just, uh, um, I'm just confused why is this not showing? Like mostly it has a, a flip button and you can flip and change the sides. I don't know why is it not showing right now. But let's say your your door was somewhere here. In fact, I, I will go, I will control Z all the way back. Okay, so let's say this is one door. I have to insert a door in here. What I will do is first of all, I will draw. See, I can already see a grid. Like it's not actually there, but I can see a grid. What I will do is I will again, go to architecture tab, go to curtain wall, grid, curtain grid. I will draw a grid right here. Okay, let's draw it here. I can change the height of the grid. Modify. I will just change the height to seven feet. And I will remove the segments. I'll remove this segment. I'll remove this segment. Okay. Now I will remove this mullion. I will remove this section. Now I want to insert my door in here. So what I will do is I will press tab, tab. Uh, let me just go to the hidden line. So what I will do is because I already have a grid, I will press tab, 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 tab. So unless I get to the exact section where I want to insert the door, I will keep on selecting tab. When I, when I am there, I will select it. I will go 
I should have a curtain wall door in there. And I just select that and my panel becomes a curtain wall. And then you can always go and do a mullion in here. You can do a mullion in here and, and you will have. Now it's very simple um, if you had um, uh, doors. Now Revit 2021 does not come with a lot of preloaded families because it's a very heavy dump. So you will always have to go to insert and then you can load the families from Autodesk. They have all these doors. Now you can see that there is a door with a handle. Uh, in fact, even in this door, I think we should have a we should have a handle if it's turned off or something. I don't know. Um, but like I said, there is a family creation course that I do all the time, uh, wherein we do touch based on how to create different kind of families. Curtain walls and curtain wall doors are a different kind, like a very specific kind of family. Uh, soon I will be also making some YouTube videos where we will give an, like an overview of how doors are made. We can do family creation videos on that. Uh, but this is how we'll do curtain wall doors in there. Uh, Anmol, I will, I mean, I will find out why in this file we cannot, uh, we have like this side, was, it was perfectly fine. I don't know what happened to the other side. Uh, why did my, Anyways, it's, uh, but you can see that we have a door in there. I will give you exercise files and these exercise files uh, will have curtain wall practice. It will have staircase practice. All of this does come with a lot of practice. You will have to, uh, and you will actually forget the steps. So I would really recommend that you guys, um, once the class is done, if you can spare some time and do um, and practice this, it will be really good. Um, and this is about the curtain walls and the staircase. We, um, yeah, one more thing I had to show you guys that last time we did discuss uh, linking PDFs. So, we did link some PDF last time and uh, and I think they are on more. One of you guys asked me that, how can I uh, link, um, how can I scale it to the exact scale that I want? Just give me one second, I will get a PDF and then I will, I will show it. So I have this one. Okay. So let's go link PDF and So this is the PDF that we have. I will select this. Uh, okay, link PDF and desktop and so 300 and DPI. Press OK. Now this is where this PDF is. Now, what I can do is uh, right now, okay, let's do this. So this is 24 feet, 10 inches. What I will do is I will go to architecture tab, draw a line from here to here. And 
Actually, I will draw ex a line exactly 24 feet, 10 inches, 24 feet, 10 inches. Enter. So yeah, this is good. Now I will select this. There is this option of scale. Now it's going to ask me graphical or numerical. So I'm going to go graphical. I'm going to, it's asking me end point of the lines. So uh, first of all, I have to enable uh, snaps. Now let's scale it. Scale, there's a scale option in here. So I will select this line and this line, and then I will just scale it all the way to here. So now I have the exact scale. So you just have to find one dimension and I can scale it accordingly. Did everybody get it or you want me to repeat it? Did you guys understand? Okay, let's repeat. So this is the PDF. I will find any one dimension that I know. For example, I know that this is 24 feet, 10 inches. I will draw a model line or a detail line. I should have to make sure that the, uh, the snaps are enabled. I will draw a line. Uh, it's, is it? It's right now. Yeah, let's undo this. So we know this is 24 feet, 10 inches, but actually if I go and measure this, it's actually not 24. Uh, it's not 24 feet, it's some five feet, <coughs> eight inches. So I will select the file. It's it's very similar to how we, how we do it in uh, AutoCAD. <coughs> select, scale, Select the end point of the line. So I select this end point and this end point. <coughs> and then I move that end point to this end point and I scale it. <coughs> so this is how we scale it. Okay. So scaling the PDF is done. Uh, I will find out what happened in here. Why is there, there is an option. I think is either there's a problem because there's always like a flip option in here. Let's try and see if we change this to any other and, and the flip option still remains. Yeah, there's no flip option. There should be one. We can try and... Um, load another family. Let's see if we can have another family from Autodesk. And category. Let's say Malians. Ah, no, you have Malians. I know that. Yeah, so reset filters. <clears throat> there is uh, 
a storefront glazed mullion curtain wall. Okay, let's do this one and see load. Instead of this mullion, let's do the one that we just got. Load auto desk mullion. We should be able to swap this. Wow. There's some problem with this. We'll see. Uh, you know what? Why don't you guys find out for me? Is there any limit on um, page size to import PDF? Because I try to import A1 size PDF and it shows it says you uh, try to, I don't think there should be, uh, but try to do a lighter file, like a two megabyte or less than that, that might be helpful. There shouldn't be a size issue with this, but, and I haven't done a lot of PDF imports. So what I will do is guys, I will, um, the, because this feature is new in Revit and um, I mean, I'm not the one who tries, who wants to import a lot of stuff into Revit. Um, let me find this out. And why don't you guys find out that why were we not able to flip the, the curtain walls? Somebody who finds the answer will get an extra mark in, uh, next week's exam. I mean, I'll do my due diligence, but uh, let's see if you guys can find out. Okay. Thank you guys. Have a great uh, rest of the Sunday and yeah, see you next week.